Hello and welcome to Brain Food, where I tell you what's yummy and nutritious for your head. And welcome to the 10th episode. Now, compared to other popular internet review shows, 10 episodes is not a whole lot. But I've been chugging along quite steadily since the first episode earlier this year. I like to think I made some improvements, such as today I even got finally got a high-definition video camera, and I feel good about the work I'm doing. So today, I'm going to do something special. However, it's quite hard to pick something for today, not because of a lack of quality writing, but an overabundance of it. Thanks to my friends and fellow critics online, I now have several titles that I've read that uh, to pick from. For example, I've got Midnighter to Killing Machine, Volume 1. I've got Birth of a Nation. And I've got Outdated, Why Dating is Ruining Your Love Life. All good titles and all of which will be reviewed later on in this series. Today, though, I choose not a book, but a webcomic series, Bitter Girl by Joan Hilty. It's a slice-of-life series about several friends who are also lesbians and the trials and tribulations that they face while living in Boston. The subjects range from the personal to the political and everywhere in between, and it has a sense of humor that anyone can appreciate. Joan Hilty is not only a cartoonist who distributes Bitter Girl to several LGBT online magazines, but she's also an editor of, according to her website, graphic novels and illustrated novels. She worked at DC as an editor from 2005 to 2010, working on many of their mainstream titles as well as their vertical line. Some of the titles that she worked on were The Flash, Batman the Outsiders, Birds of Prey, and the award-winning limited series Vixen, Return of the Lion. As I said before, Bitter Girl is about several friends living in Boston who face daily struggles such as relationships, politics, and even just finding work. The cast is all female and it's a really diverse group with the characters having different backgrounds, ethnicities, and jobs. For example, Jessica is a serious reporter who is struggling to keep her job after the newspaper she works at is taken over by an idiot who'd rather have flashy stories and no actual substance. Meanwhile, she's in a relationship with Rose, who is a labor leader that travels all over America to fight for the rights of workers. Nikki is an activist turned mass marketer out of necessity, because, hey, she's got to eat. And while she's not entirely comfortable with her job, she does realize that there's not a whole lot of work out there. In today's economy, I'd say this would definitely make her someone that we could all relate to. Karima and Annette are a happily married couple, with the former being a travel agent and the latter being a doctor. Reading their stories is, well, quite like reading a married couple's stories, because they're a happily married couple. And come to think of it, it's really rare to see any happily married gay and lesbian couples in, well any other medium of entertainment that I can think of. Like any good character, they're human and have flaws and never delve into the ridiculous or stupid, but rather adds depth, which further raises the humor from what could have been insulting to funny and enlightening. When the strips showcase political issues, the humor just becomes that much better. For example, a recent strip showcased the character of Yvonne using quotes from anti-gay Republicans as pickup lines. She strikes out with lines from Rick Perry and then Ron Paul, only to score with a line from Michelle Bachman of all people. And it further showcases just how ridiculous the quotes are in the first place. One of my favorites is a semi-long-running gag called Ads She'd Like to See. The basic premise is that one of the characters would be at home watching TV when an ad she'd like to see would air. One example that I really like is a truck commercial in which the toughness of a guy's truck is tested time and time again with heavier and heavier objects before finally being crushed under the weight of all the money needed to fuel the metal monstrosity. Now obviously it's hard for me to convey the humor properly of the four panel strips and that's because I want you to go to joanhilty.net and read it in its entirety. She has archives on her website that collects the series from its earliest days to 2009, 
and the remainder can be found in the archives of the LGBT online magazines that publishes Bitter Girl. It's also important for people to read this because this is a positive portrayal of gay women, and any positive portrayal of any minority is a good thing. Too often we're dealt with stereotypes in the mass media, and when there are lesbians, more often than not they're brought in for the straight male gaze. Thus, for those of us who want more out of our entertainment, we're finding out that we have to go online to look for it. Well, here's something online, which means that you can read it anywhere you got a portable device or computer with an internet connection. It's funny, engaging, thoughtful, and it's infinitely better than any other comic strip currently running in any other printed magazine or newspaper out there. I highly recommend you go to Joan Hilty's website and read Better Girl and then explore the rest of her website, which has short illustrated comics other than Better Girl. It's always interesting to me to go back and see an artist's early work and compare it with their current material, seeing how far they developed as an artist. I'm Triple J, and that's all I got left to say. Take care. Jenny came over and told me about Freddy, such a hairy behemoth, she said. Dumb as a box of hammers, but he's such a handsome guy. And I opened up and I told about Larry And yesterday how he asked me to marry Not giving him an answer yet I think I can do better And we laugh Compare notes We had a drink, we had a smoke She took off her overcoat I kissed a girl